All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do oh, I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. The name is J.H., not Nick. The person that said his name is Nick. How y'all doing, family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Everybody crisp? Everybody angry? Let's talk. I rub people the wrong way. I get it. I get it. Got clerks emailing me now, tripping. Ah, you need to. Ah, yo, see knowledge. Seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. One person even said something about, well, you know, the they can't, the what do you call it? The kiosk can't do passports. It's crazy because somebody sent me an email the other day and it's just it's just amazing how it all falls into play. Do you all know that FedEx is now doing passports? I would I <laughs> I did my passport and I didn't go to the post office. No, I went to the courthouse and did it that way. I I just can't deal with my ex-wife is a clerk. So please, y'all stop thinking that I'm attacking people. That's not the case. I'm giving you information. Wake up. FedEx is doing passports. Me personally, I think it'll be a national grievance, but y'all ain't gonna do that about it. Good it out. A passport application fast and easy at FedEx office. Look it up. Look it up. You ain't gonna look it up. I'll leave the link in the video description. And you can do it online. And then when you get to FedEx office, they do the pictures there, right? They do everything. You can apply, renew with expedited service. Oh, it's gonna cost more. I'd rather pay a little bit more than I have to deal with. <sighs> Come on, man. Come on. I need to cut it out. Everybody doing they thug thistle, but enough of that. You see what I was referring to with this FedEx office. Have anybody been in the FedEx office? Probably not. Look at the services that they offer inside of a FedEx office. They offer um, home decor, banners, signs, posters, marketing and promotional materials, business and career essentials, all this stuff. That's what that's what the USPS is going to look like on the inside. Trust what I'm t I'm telling you. The interior and that's what they have those sales centers coming up for. That's what they're trying to emulate. Why? Stop being shallow because it is what it is. But we don't. Enough with the clerks. They all boiling right now. Hey, don't get mad at me. I told you, look at your Google reviews. The Google reviews are lying. No, they're not. I've had clerks just disgusting to me. I work at the post office. I don't, man, come on. Carriers. I want you to listen to this. Complete replacements at an alarming rate. Other package carriers and industries have encountered similar issues and are making revolutionary changes to improve wages and working conditions so they can hire and maintain effective workforces. If we don't follow suit, we will be left behind. UPS and the Teamsters negotiated historic wages increases almost 50% for part-time workers and eliminating the lowest paid tier of delivery workers. All the manufacturers in the UAW agreed to increase wages between 25% and 160%, with the lowest paid workers getting $40 an hour during the term of the CBA. On top of that, the big three increased retirement contributions and provided more paid time off. The parties addressed their problems attracting and retaining temporary workers by converting many to permanent employees and hastening their ability to earn benefits and reach the top wage tier. Healthcare workers, Hollywood writers, actors, directors, and many others have seen similar unprecedented improvements in their wages, access to 
benefits and changes to work rules that made their jobs more attractive on all levels, but certainly for entry level workers. There's no question that we're going to have to follow the lead of these industries if we are to tackle today's challenges. The NRLCA is encouraged and inspired by the Delivering for America plan, and our union has been steadfast in its support for the plan's goals and many of its strategies. The Postal Service's acknowledgement that hiring and retention issues are not just personnel issues, but also affect employees' quality of life and safety and health issues is a step in the right direction. Likewise, we are grateful for your efforts to improve infrastructure in the physical work environment at the SNDC unit. This is for the rural carriers. This was two or three weeks ago. Do you hear the negotiating in there? And it was just probably about a minute clip, but I'm gonna actually play uh, some wording from them. It's about a four minute clip after this, but transparency is number one. Number two, you hear what they're negotiating. You hear who they refer to with UPS and keeping up with the rest of them, right? This was just a few weeks ago. This is what the carriers are gonna be doing. Now, I just saw this video yesterday. Somebody sent that to me as well. And when I told you guys last week, when I posted that other video, that that's what they were gonna be talking about. Somebody was like, no, that's from three years ago. Hey, this was just from two weeks ago from the rural carriers. I would like for the carriers to watch this though. It's a little three minute clip with their president speaking directly to their members and their members probably have never seen this video. But the good thing is, is that not necessarily that uh, what they're talking about, it's the transparency. It's just the transparency. Everybody wants to be, you know, they just want to know what's going on. That's it. At the end of the day, people just want to know what's going on. And that little clip, like I said, you have a general idea of what they're bringing to the table. And it's the beginning of the contract negotiations. How long is it going to take? Who knows? Their contract is up in May. And right now we're in April. Are they going to get it done by May? No. When are they going to get it done? Who knows? This is what the back pay is always for. It happens every year. It happens every year. But I want you to listen to hear what he has to say, as well as his transparency. And then somebody like let y'all president know when y'all go on this little Zoom meeting, say, hey, how come the rural carriers president is at least talking to them? Even if he lying, he's still talking to y'all, right? And y'all don't know nothing and kept in the dark. I'm just saying, it's just some food for thought, all right? And y'all check out that FedEx office uh, down there. And I'll also leave the link for the rural carrier um, full video that you're probably not all going to watch. But you should. You should. You should. I believe you need to seek knowledge. Arm yourself with this instead of this. As many of you are aware, the NRLCA opened collective bargaining with the United States Postal Service at USPS headquarters on March 5th. The NRLCA's opening statement to the Postmaster General was recorded and can be seen on any of our social media platforms. I strongly encourage you to watch and listen to the message of what we are trying to achieve in this round of collective bargaining. Our opening statement was directed to not only the Postmaster General, but all the Postal Service executives and their bargaining team that were present for opening session. The Postal Service had their own opening statements. Unfortunately, we were not permitted to record those, but your national board and our legal counsel were present to listen and take note of what they had to say. As I have stated previously, the preparations for negotiations start as soon as the previous contract is signed. There is a constant process involving hundreds of hours of preparation from our teams of experts and consultants leading up to opening session and hundreds of hours spent while we are actively in collective bargaining. Your entire national board has been involved in multiple main table sessions with the Postal Service bargaining team and we have put forth multiple proposals. 
This pattern will continue up to the expiration of our current collective bargaining agreement that is set to expire May 20th. Along with their national board, we have several teams of consultants, advisors, and legal counsel working on multiple issues and strategizing to have the best prepared arguments and positions possible as we move through bargaining. We have many weeks of main table sessions scheduled with the Postal Service to not only put forward our proposals, but also to receive proposals from the Postal Service. Things typically start out slower and heat up as we draw closer to expiration of the agreement. This round will be slightly different as we have our foot on the gas from day one and have no intention of letting up. Our proposals are derived from the hundreds of resolutions that you, the membership, have passed at national conventions. We work collectively as a board to determine which resolutions are most impactful for the majority of rural carriers. Many resolutions can be combined as they are very similar in nature. Some are more likely attainable than others, but make no mistake, work rules are being put on the table as there are many contractual provisions that need improvement. I don't think it will come as a surprise to any of you that sharp focus of this round of collective bargaining is going to be on economic gains for all rural carriers and to undo harmful rules imposed by arbitrators of the past. Your national board is meeting in person here at our headquarters office, fully engaged in what truly is an exhausting process of preparing for and bargaining with the Postal Service and every member of your national board is involved. I note that all of this is taking place over the next couple of months while we are also attending multiple area conferences and state conventions across the entire country. While we are committed to attending all these other meetings and sharing information with the members of your states, we are also deeply committed to put in the hours and the effort required to negotiate a contract and this may impact the amount of time some officers are able to be in attendance at some meetings. Please view the NRLCA opening statement, understand what we are seeking through collective bargaining, and I am committed to keeping you informed as we move through this process. Thank you. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.